Hello, Catafire 6 here, and uh, welcome to another ARC dossier review video. Today I'll be looking at um, the dossiers that are coming up um, in ARC, and kind of my opinion on them, and like, you know, because I really like dinosaurs, like, and prehistoric animals, and because like, I'm really excited about the dinosaurs coming out. They're from the Paleogene area, and so I'm going to look at a bunch of those, um, but we're going to look at as many as we can in the time span that we have. So I'm just going to be looking off them off the internet, so some of them might not be completely zoomed in. Alright, so I'll be back in a second. Alright, so this first one is the Arthropleura. So this is basically a prehistoric centipede that, um, from what I know, it was a herbivore. Um, so this one looks like it's going to be spitting acid, let's see, domesticated, like most of the arthropods of the island. Arthropleura is simple-minded and relatively easy to tame. It is an almost entirely uh, mil military, military, I think it's military, mount useful mostly for attacking at the, at a distance. Thanks to its unique defenses whenever hunting or a warning, wear, war, wearing, Warring? A oh, warring. Arthropleura is generally safe from all but the largest of creatures. Okay, so it's basically got like the equivalent of like chin armor all over its back, and it spits acid. And it looks like it's pretty easy to tame in it, and you can ride it and everything. So this one looks really cool. Um, like this is the kind of thing that like you 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 see this, and you're just like wow, because the you really want to ride something that's not only strong but it's cool, because. I don't know if I'm just being a hipster here, but riding a Tyrannosaurus, everyone rides Tyrannosauruses, okay? Like, you you can't... It's n There's nothing cool about riding a T-Rex in Ark. I mean, if it was real life, of course. But if you're just riding a T-Rex in a battle, and, you know, everyone else is too, and then you got people on Gigas and Spinos, and maybe Carnos, that's not, that's not really cool. But, like, my favorite dinosaur or historic animal in the world, uh, most of them are from the Paleogene era, but... The terror bird is my favorite, and the fact that it's been, it's been made like a super mount with its gliding and attack and weight and everything, like speed or should I say the weight's terrible? Um, that's really cool to me because I can actually go into battle with one of those and feel really like myself, like it, like that mount is me. So this is kind of one of those mounts. I think this mount is something where you go in and you're like one, you're like the only one riding that in the field. Like you bring something special to your team. But that's what I think about this mount. This this is this should be really cool for a war. Um, so I'll be right back with the next one. All right, so next we have the woolly rhino. Uh, uh, so, I mean, again, Paleogene era. Um, if I'm right, I think it's Paleo. Yeah, it looks like Paleogene era. Um, late Paleogene, so like the Ice Age. So this is supposed to be, from what I've heard, like a super mount for like a, like a tank, like just a super buffed up trike. Like the illustration over here is just some guy like wrecking a trike. Um, so this this looks like the kind of thing that can just destroy anything. So domesticated, when not being hunted for its horns, Coladonta makes an excellent beast of burden. Its ability to take on far larger opponents provides sufficient charging room, as well as its uh, sizable load capacity, uh, make it a sound addition to any uh, tra tracer party or gathering expedition. Let's see, so it can be tamed and ridden, it looks like. I guess it's, do you not have to saddle it, is what it looks like, like kind of like a dire wolf. So I guess you need space to charge it. Uh, despite many times still hunt them extensively due to their unique resources, its horns can be ground into highly arousing powder, and its thick fur can support many insulating outfits, making the Coladonta much in demand. So I guess this seems like the kind of thing that you'd make a fur coat out of, um, the thing I don't like about the snow biome is the fact that to survive in it, you need a fur coat. And where do you get that fur from animals that live in the snow biome? Like, I guess you could hunt them, hunt Argents, but it won't give you very much. I don't know. That's just kind of, um, kind of inconvenient to me. But this looks really cool. I mean, I'll, this kind of looks like it's something hard to tame. And especially if it's like a passive tame. Oh my god. I, I hate passive tames. I haven't tried passive tame yet. It just seems so annoying. Like, I tried it once on a Gigantopithecus. I, I got really bored. I did not have enough patience for that. Especially if you want an actually like, strong one. Mm -mm. But this looks really cool too. Um, this looks again like like it has a potential to be a super mount. Like I think there are in Ark there are mounts that can swim. There are mounts that can fly. Mounts that can you know power speed. And then there are super mounts that just have everything kind of 
mixed together, like the terror bird. It can glide, it can run, it can attack, or like the Arthopura, just like speed, or it might actually be that fast, but it looks like it could be fast considering what it actually is. You know, attack, and this thing, just weight, and like charging, and power, like I mean, just things that kind of make it an all-around good mount for doing multiple things, not just combat, or not just gathering, and not just, you know, carrying weight. Um, you know? And I feel like raptors can be turned into that, too, but you have to work with them a lot, just because they're so weak, naturally. Um, but yeah, so that's the woolly rhino, and that looks... I'm excited for that, too. Alright, then on to the next one. Okay, so this next one is the Megalania. So... Uh, let's see, Melania late, a carnivore, so it's aggressive, so it'll attack you if it sees you. Domesticated, extremely rare ability of the Megalania to effortlessly climb walls makes it a highly sought after mount. While it has no, but is no, by no means the fastest, strongest, or toughest mount, the way it can effortlessly climb in the caves and scale mountains means it will always have a place in any advanced tribe stables. That's a pretty nice way to put it. Because every, everyone needs something for something else. Like, everyone has different kinds of mounts. So, this is not a super mount by any means. It's basically... It's one of those mounts where you get it for one reason and one reason alone. And that is, I guess, to scale walls if you want to get secretive or if you want to get to a high place. You know? I guess it'd be useful to climb over someone's base walls and blow up blow it up from the inside, maybe. But this is not the kind of thing that I think you should go into battle with. I mean, it just seems super weak. But... I guess it's kind of rare and hard to find by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, this seems like it, the model is going to be really cool. And it looks kind of bigger than it looks on the dossier but with the person in comparison. Um, but this seems like kind of the thing where, like, if you saw, if I saw this thing, I'd run. But uh, apparently, it's not that strong. I mean, these dossiers aren't exactly always accurate. I mean, I could see this thing and get wrecked by it because it has some kind of weird poison thing they lacked they forgot to leave in this dossier but it looks like something that kind of like just i mean the whole thing of putting a place in the tribe stables i guess that's because like everyone has something for everything so like i i'm really excited about the new base that we're building just kind of how we're able to have more freedom with it like i'm going to build a bunch of different stables for different things and different buildings for different things you know and that should be really cool the only thing that i'm kind of disappointed about with the server we're on is that it's PV pve strictly there's no pvp on it and we tried going to pvp server it, it was so full of people that we couldn't go like one day without getting raided it was terrible so what would be really great is if one more people got onto the server because it's got a decent amount but it needs more and then the other thing would that would be good is if um Let's see if it got PvP slash PvE. Hold on. Uh. <coughs> eh. Eh. Anyways. But yeah, it'd be better if it was like PvP slash PvE, because then it'd be like kind of casual PvP, like raids here, raids there. Like it wouldn't be disabled, but like no, like full on, just like destroy, die, death. You know? But okay, so that's kind of what I think about. The whole thing as a whole, but, um, the whole thing as a whole, that was redundant. Alright, on to the next dossier. Alright, so this next one that we've got is the Thyla, Thylacolio. So, I guess it's like a lion, has the Leo part. So it looks like it can climb trees. Let's see, domesticated Thylacolio is a moderately strong mount, and its ability to climb trees and jump long distances makes it useful for transversal, such as that developing tribes often tame it. Small raiding parties particularly favor the Thylacoleo as it is well suited to, for ambushes and unfair fights. Okay, so this seems kind of like it's just like it's the last dinosaur we were, I already forgot its name, the last one we did, but better. Just like it can climb too, but this time it actually has the ability to fight. And, you know, can you imagine just seeing like three of these just rain down from the trees with people on them? Like, I guess this is like here attacking a saber tooth, you see. Uh, uh, powerful marsupial. Okay, marsupial, so probably paleogene. Uh, pal yeah. Um, there were a lot of marsupials in the pale paleogene era. Let's see, it's long claws, semi optimal digits, climber, thylacoleo, climber up trees. So, is it in the forest then, if it's climbing trees? Oh, but these things wild. If they still climb trees, it's just like, oh my god. You're just cutting down a tree, and then all of a sudden this giant thing jumps out. I mean,. They're probably not that common if that's the case, but 
So it looks like it can jump, you can ride it. Um, but yeah, this looks like they could, it has the potential to be a super mount. It's like with the whole climbing ability and the just ability to fight too. Like, and like that's what I thought about the last one. Was like that one could have been a super mount if it could fight. But from what the dossier says, it's not a very good for fighting. It's not very good for anything besides climbing. So this one seems like it could. It has a potential to be like a really good all-around mount that you could just like destroy. And it's also good for like shipping, shipping things. Let's see. Little small tribe, particularly likely as it was well suited for ambushes. Unfair. Okay, yeah, but yeah, this just looks amazing. Like this is probably gonna be one of my favorite dinosaurs or prehistoric animals coming up. Um, I'm really excited for this. The thing is, I don't know. Like Ark, they do, their releases are just so sporadic. Like they release one dossier, and then two weeks later they release another one, and then the second one came, comes out way before this one and the the first one doesn't come out till like way later on it's kind of weird you, you know, like normally you think they release the LCA and then a couple weeks later they let the dinosaur but no it's completely different it's sporadic everywhere supposedly the next dinosaur is going to be the Basilosaurus which is a sea creature which really have no interest in at all um but when when i learn that some of these things are going to be coming out like just like when you if you wait a long time to get to get dinosaurs that you want in the game and when you see on the, because uh, I, I am subscribed to the ARC YouTube channel, so when you see on the YouTube channel that, like, the new spotlight, then it, it just, it gets really exciting. Alright, so on to the last dossier. Alright, on to our last dossier. Um, this is the Caprosuchus. So, carnivore of aggressive, of course. This thing, again, like, it seems like they're letting out a lot of things that have the potential to be, as I call them, super mounts. This thing can go on water, looks like it can probably go on land, it has the jump factor. Let's see. Um, and it is tameable. Can you ride it? Cause if you can't ride it, that kind of ruins a lot. That, that kind of makes like the Dimetrodon. Let's see. So as are generally split about usefulness of Caprosuchus. Some love its speed both in and out of the water, essentially making it among the fastest small s speed animal. All-terrain mounts when traveling through the m wetlands. Others do not like how relatively frail Caprosuchus is and do not think it is a high speed and damaging attacks make up for its shortcoming. Uh, shortcoming is weight, maybe? They do not like how relatively frail. So I guess, okay. So I guess it's easy to kill. Okay. So I guess it can be ridden because it's a mount. Yeah. Okay. So it can be ridden. Um. Wait. Okay. Yeah. That's what health X means. So this thing does not have a lot of health. It can be killed very easily, but it's attack. And so it's like, it's like an attack type, like just getting in, getting as much damage as it can really fast, moving around. You know. Uh, it's like there's two. There's the kind that attack fast and hard, and there's the ones that just like. Uh, there's the kind that attack fast and soft, and there's the kinds that just slow and big. Just like you move around, you get them over and over and over. But if they get one hit on you, just bam, you're dead. But this one has a speed and the attack. So if it can like outrun and outmaneuver something strong without getting hit, it could be really good. But the frailness that can make it a problem for as far as being a good combat mount um but the model does look really cool it's basically like a better sarco um but what my whole opinion about those dossiers is the speed that they're coming out is that with the amount of dossiers that arcs let out and then the amount of like the time period in which they release the dinosaurs into the game like once every two or three weeks they really have enough dinosaurs new dinosaurs to last them another like couple months if not a year um Unless they do one of those things where during a patch they release like four, um, then that could that could make a need for more. But I'm sure they'll make more in the future. So honestly, like Ark just has, they have so much ahead of them as far as dinosaurs go, and uh, I'm I'm really excited about when like when I like all the dinosaurs you see me do these reviews on when they come out, I get really excited. Like when the Terra Bird come out, I was so excited, and the other ones like the Therizinosaur, Pachycephalon, and Pachyrhinosaur. The Pachycephalon was eh. I mean, it was always that kind of underwhelming thing where, like, you, you're you ready for it, and then it comes out, and then it's really just, like, not what you expected. And that's the only bad part about the d whole dinosaurs coming out, and then you're not, like, not looking at anything like the dossier or whatever. Like, if you look at the Argentavis dossier, it looks like a giant vulture, and the Argentavis looks more like an eagle. But, okay. But that's all the time we have for this video. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, 
And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Okay, well, bye.